This episode of Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company and their food truck will be up in Tippin this Friday and Saturday. This Friday, they will be up at the Superior Auto off of Market Street from 12 to 4 and back at the Tiffin Brewery this Saturday from 5 to 9 o'clock. So be sure to hit up the um, Mad Canadian food truck this weekend to get some of that sweet, sweet, delicious barbecue. Uh, be sure to check out his social medias to find out more information about him and his food truck. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, we're the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch roast order, veteran owned, hand roasted micro coffee brewer or roaster rather. You you they roast you brew. That that's that that's how it normally works. Because shipping hot coffee through the mail, uh, there are several challenges involved with that that uh, it, it, it just wouldn't make for good coffee. Uh, all of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. Integrity is the core value of what they do. And what else would you expect from a marine owned, Ohio owned company? Uh, they import their high quality coffee beans from faraway lands such as Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia. Um, some of their coffees are available in K-Cup. Gift cards are available. Free shipping over $50. And if you find that one coffee that you have just fell in love with, you can subscribe and save a few bucks per bag. So you can find your very own coffee at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. We're talking about nachos in the chat here, Jared. Yeah, and I haven't... Uh, I need to put my... Kroger pickup order together and I'm just like yeah she get some stuff for nachos <laughs> they're killing me down there my, my wife makes a pretty good uh skillet nachos dish either chicken or beef in it all right all right all right um really good really good uh no I that is that is wrong Buckeye Esquire if you've ever witnessed someone throw some cheese on some chips and put it in a microwave, you know that's not right. Yes. All right, Jared, let's go ahead and it's making me hungry, so let's right. <laughs> let's get this episode started. Make sure to put that Brits blend on those nachos, if that hasn't already been said. That mad Canadian Brits blend. You can throw some 4-H on there as well. Maybe a little bit of 4-H to give it a kick, but you, you need a good you need a good base layer of the Brits blend as well. All right, all right, let's start the episode. Let's start the episode. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you doing, Jared? Alternative, Kyle. And the YouTube people will get this joke. YouTube people will get this joke. But I'm going to try this again. I'm going to try the intro again. I'm not editing anything. We're, we're just going to do it again. But this is just for the YouTube people who are privy to the secret few seconds of the show there. We've got nachos back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. Kyle, are you hungry yet? Yes. Let's get started. <laughs> all right. Uh, this is our this Friday is episode. We can have a little bit more fun here because no one ever listens to it. Uh <laughs> These are our sloop picks. Um, we have picked seven games from around the country that we will be picking against the line. Um, we have, uh, like I said, seven games lined up for this week. We also have our special guest picker who is in the chat right now. Buckeye Esquire down there for the YouTube folk. Um, can't there, there we go right there. Uh, he's down there chatting away. Uh, he, he also gets to pick his games. Now, Kyle, the first game we picked was Ohio State versus Rutgers. And if you want to hear our predictions on that, um, you're you're going to have to go listen to the Thursday episode entitled Know Your Enemy, Colin Rutgers. But as, as just a brief, we all we all three picked Ohio State to win and cover. 
What more specific uh, than that, however, you're going to have to go listen to the Thursday episode. Yes. All right. Next up oh, here, we got we just another... down there making colon jokes now. Y'all are mature. All right. Next, this next game here, Jared. It's another red on red uh, team here. We got Arkansas and Georgia. I think we're seeing a trend here. Ohio State, Rutgers red, Arkansas, Georgia red. Let's see if this trend continues here. Uh, Arkansas and Georgia, noon game. Um, it is here. Georgia is an 18 and a half point favorite. Talked about last um, in Thursday's episode that we thought 15 and a half was a lot for Ohio State to cover Rutgers. 18 and a half for Georgia to cover Arkansas. Yeah, um, and I'm gonna gonna pick Arkansas. Um, I don't think that they win, um, but I I do think they score more points on Georgia than anyone's expecting. Um, Georgia's defense has been very stout. Uh, three points allowed to Clemson, seven points to UAB, uh, thirteen points to South Carolina, and they shut out Vanderbilt last week. Now. It should be stated, however, that uh, Clemson can't score on Georgia Tech or anybody. Uh, <laughs> preview for later. Um, so, do I actually end up? And then the other three games, all those teams are bad. I Georgia's defense is obviously very good. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to try and diminish that. But I also don't think that they're as good as we initially thought, just because we base so much of that opinion on what they did to Clemson. Um, Arkansas, on the other hand, um, I, I they're not necessarily a high scoring team. Um, they did put, put on 40 against against Texas, which was pretty good. And they they did defeat Texas A&M last week, which was like their entry into the stage. But I don't think either of those Texas teams are very good. Uh, Georgia Southern is Georgia Southern. Rice is Rice. <sighs> Arkansas is overrated, but 18 and a half is just too many damn points. Georgia wins, but I think they win by like 14 or 15. Georgia wins and covers. I got I got Georgia here. I think I think they'll win by 21 points here. I, I think I think they'll cover in this game here. So I, I'll take the Bulldogs to cover. Kyle, I've I proved on our Thursday episode that I'm not capable of reading tonight. Do you, do you want to pick up Buckeye Esquire's pick here? All right, sure. So Buckeye Esquire saying he's a proud law dog alum. And spent three awesome years in Athens. You can bet there's going to be more than a few hogs roast on campus. Dogs offense has looked improved, slaving dragons, throttling roosters, and stuffing the southern nerds in lockers. <laughs> but the Razorbacks have been a scrappy squad. Dogs win, but these hogs cause a bit of indigestion and get the cover. Next up, Kyle, we have Michigan going to Wisconsin. Uh, How dare you? I'm sorry, I have to be an adult sometime and actually say the word Michigan. <laughs> sorry. Um, Wisconsin is dogged by one and a half points. I threw. I, we always say who's favored. I just I felt like throwing a throwing a, a quick monkey wrench in there. Uh, we have a skunk bear versus a skunk bear here, Kyle. What are your thoughts? Uh, the skunk bear covers. So, <laughs> oh, uh, the, the, the real the real skunk bear um, covers here. I I have that team up north covering here. I just don't have any confidence you. in this. Yeah, I don't have any confidence in this Wisconsin offense. It's just, ugh. it's just ugh, this. And I think I think Michigan's uh, offense is just going to be able to um, hold on to the ball. And I mean. One and a half is pretty much a pick 'em. It, it, it's pretty much a pick 'em. So I'll, I got I got Michigan to win this game. So I'll, I'll pick them to cover here. Uh, Wisconsin is much better than their record indicates. I'm not saying that they're great. Kyle has already noted the problems that they have on the offense, and they do. 
Um, but a real close loss to Penn State, who's proving to be pretty good. A Notre Dame loss that is, by factors of I don't know how many, closer than that 41-13 to 13 makes it look. That was a very close football game. Um, Wisconsin is so much better than the one and two that they are. And as previously stated, Michigan's best win is a seven point win over Rutgers. So I'm not, I'm not throwing any parades. I'm not going to, I'm not going to crown they ass. I guess is what I'm trying to say. If I can go back to one of my favorite coach rants of all time, I'm not ready to crown their ass. If you want to crown them, then crown them. But I'm not going to. So right. I'm going to I'm going to take Wisconsin to to win and to cover. Whatever the over under in this game is, pick the under. All right, I was OK, Kyle, damn it. You stole my thunder. Because I was going to say bonus pick. Yeah, Buckeye Esquire. He got it. <laughs> they are who we thought they were. <laughs> he got it. Um, so the, the over 40, under, Jared, 43 and a half. Yeah, I was going to make you under. pick that as well, just as a as a fun little aside. You're going under, under 43 and a half? Yeah. I'm going over. It's only go with 43 like a, points. It's going to be it's going to be like a 21-17 game. That's so close. Okay, but that's still under. Yeah, but you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Buckeye Esquires has here Battle of the Oversized Vermin. One team in nauseating to discuss in Whiskey Lay Down and died in the fourth quarter last week. This game should probably be broadcast in black and white. Boring, close. Teton escapes with a three-point victory, which, Jared, is a cover. There you go. Uh, I don't have the notes See, up, Kyle. Buckeye Let's Esquire see. and I are on the same page here. That's okay, because right, I'm next in first up. place. Not for long. All right, next up here, we have another top 10 matchup here. This time it is Cincinnati and Notre Dame. We're going to get, we're going to get a, one of these teams is going to get their first loss of the season here. Uh, it is a 2.30 kickoff and Cincinnati fighting Fickles is a two and a half point favorite. The Fighting Fickles. Uh, Kyle, I got USC. USC? USC? Why, why, where did the S come from? It's just UC. Yes. Um, University of State Cincinnati. Uh, Southern Cincinnati. Southern it was right Cincinnati. there. But isn't Southern Cincinnati, Kentucky? Anyway. Um, yeah, I'm, go I'm going with the Bearcats here. I think they win. The two and a half points isn't enough to scare me away from picking them. I think that's an easy enough cover. Kyle, if Cincinnati wins this, and if, they, if they're able to win it decidedly, and I'm not saying that they are, but if they are able to win this decidedly, does this put them into like legitimate playoff conversation, even as an American conference team? I, I definitely think so. Uh, they're still, they still, I think, need help. But if you're a Buckeye fan, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that we the, all love fickle, but, but if you want the Buckeyes to get into the playoffs, I know it's still really early though. And we're seeing a big divide with the Georgia and Alabama possibly see two SEC possibly seeing two SEC teams in. And then maybe if you get an Oklahoma in Oregon, it'll be or, Oregon, or, not Oklahoma. Me, Oregon in. Then you got Cincinnati there as that fourth spot. Man, that's you, 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 you you're, you're going to might have some Buckeye fans that might be trying to want Notre Dame to win this game, possibly. Right, but then you have to have the conversation about Notre Dame getting that spot. Now, you could certainly make yeah. the argument that Notre Dame has more losable games on their schedule after this versus Cincinnati, but um, 
I don't know if if it all comes down to it. The committee has never put a group of five team into the playoff, but they have put Notre Dame into the playoff for whatever that's worth. Yep. But that's not what we're that's Uh, not what we're talking about right now. I have Cincinnati to win and cover. You have Cincinnati to win and cover. What does Buckeye Esquire have to say? It's he says here, prodigal son Marcus Freeman returns to face his football father. Will Jack Cohn play for Notre Dame? Can the Irish defense hold up against an offense from this century? I don't have answers to these questions as of Tuesday morning, but these feel like a Jared picks the underdog type of game, and I have ground to make up. Give me the Bearcats and Luke Fickle, dead strength to cover. Swing and a miss, Buckeye Esquire. Swing and a miss. (laughs) All right. Next up here, we have... Our sponsors. Ad. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Seven seasons, Kyle. Seven seasons. We're we're on the same. We're on the same go. Um, am I going first? You going first? Yeah. Let's hear from our good friends up in up in Toledo area. Okay. The Iron so me. Coffee Company. <laughs> let's talk about some me- uh, some medium roast coffees. Um, there's the Rage Against the Dying of the Light, a very fine medium roast coffee. However, two of my favorite coffees, not just of the Iron Bean Coffee Company family, but just of just period, just like two of my favorite coffees, period, uh, would be the Ride or Die, which is a medium roast, uh, gentle, distinctive version of the classic American breakfast cup. Superb when drip, drip, brewed and enjoyed black. Um, roasted and turned with cocoa nibs, a Brazilian yellow bourbon coffee bean, superb, superb smoothness and flavor. You'll find caramel, hazelnut, sweet, sweet cream notes, um, in this unflavored coffee. And then there's the cast iron, um, which is my tied for second favorite or tied for first. It's my second tied for first favorite medium roast coffee of all time. There, I I got there. I got there. Um, It gets its name. uh, This is the cast iron. Uh, It gets its name because it was originally roasted in a cast iron skillet. Um, It's extremely versatile and smooth, has a rich and clean flavor, uh, fuller bodied with lower acidity. Uh, The main tone is going to be a deep, semi-sweet chocolate smoke. Balanced with just a uh, a hint of floral, it's a Honduran sweet, uh, balanced, clean coffee with a spice note, slight black pepper, and a little bit of a a little bit of a caramel, especially in the in the lighter roast. So it's it's a uh, single origin breakfast coffee if 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 you're uh, looking for something like that. So uh, those are the those are my two favorite coffees. Uh, like I said, there's also the Rage Against the Dying of the Light. Uh, there's also the uh, Thor and there's a medium roast Rocco. So if you're if you're looking for a medium roast coffee, you have selections, uh, but you can find all of these for yourself at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. The other one that's on there, peanut butter chocolate Buckeye sounds pretty good, too. Where Where the hell did these come from? Kyle, bonus ad read. Did he add new flavors? He did. Yes. I didn't click on the flavors tab. Oh, okay. Just... Super, super duper. Okay. Additional, additional flavored coffees. Uh, we're just going to have to speed read these. Uh, thank you, Nomad, for the heads up. Oh, he said the email just now came in. Okay. So I feel better about not seeing these. There's a salted caramel mocha, a vanilla hazelnut, a cinnamon roll, a butter pecan, a peanut butter chocolate, a banana foster. What the absolute hell is happening over there? He's gone crazy and I love it. Yeah. Uh, you can find all this for yeah. yourselves at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mentioned at the beginning of the show where you can meet the Mad Canadian in his food truck to get some of that delicious barbecue. Let me read some of the uh, reviews from live customers or people who have actually had some of his uh, delicious food truck. We have one here over on his Facebook page. Um, We have 
Somebody who says, ordered some pulled pork, coleslaw, and corn for a family lunch. And holy crap, Jared, was it awesome. The slaw wasn't runny or overly creamy. And the way it was seasoned was the best slaw I've had in a long time. Spoiler, it was some of his seasoning. Uh, the corn was fresh and had plenty of spices and fresh green onion on top. Finally, the pork was absolutely fantastic. Very mild, smoky flavor to it. Juicy, not dry at all, and very tender. Plan to have TMC cater the next event I have for sure. Talked about the beginning of the show, Jared, how about get about being hungry with some people <laughs> talking about um, some food in the beginning. Now I'm really hungry after this after this review here. So be sure to check out the Mad Canadian social media, Facebook, Twitter. Find more information about him and his food truck. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. Kyle, um, have dinner with TMC and then have dessert with the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, the salted caramel mocha and the cinnamon roll are calling my name. I don't know how I feel about a, uh, about a, about a peanut butter coffee, though. This isn't an ad read anymore. This is just me genuinely talking about how I'm obsessed with what's happening on my screen right now. This is, this, this is free. This is this is this is free. Uh, All right. This is just me talking. All right. All right. Let's get into the games here. Next up here, we have Ole Miss taking on Alabama. Three thirty kickoff. Alabama is a fourteen and a half point favorite. And Jared, I don't think that's enough. I don't think Ole Miss is all what they're cracked up to be. Alabama smokes them here. Yeah, this will just them. be the latest sacrifice at the shrine of the elephant that is Alabama. Vishnu? Is that the Indian elephant god? Vishnu, is that correct? I don't know. Um, even if I even if I'm right, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Um, but yeah, this is just the latest sacrifice. Um, 14 and a half is a big number. I'd feel a lot more comfortable if it was like 13 and a half. Ganesh? It's Ganesh. See, I was wrong. I tried, though. Um, am I pronouncing it anywhere? Ganesh? Maybe it's more Ganesh. Anyway. Um, yeah, I, I'm all about, yeah, sacrificed at the temple, at the shrine of Bama. Bama wins by 21 or more. Yep. All right. Let's see what okay, Esquire says here. He says, did you... Did you see Saban on the Manning cast? The man looks the man looks like a football terminator set back in time with the sole purpose to depri of depriving Lane Kiffin from experiencing an ounce of joy. Nevertheless, the Rebs, Land Sharks, what is their new not flagrantly racist mascot? <laughs> have the have the nation's number one offense in Florida with a uh, decidedly worse offense was able to keep it close. They gave me two touchdowns and a hook. I'll take it. Bama most certainly wins, but Mississippi covers. Yeah, that, that hook makes me nervous. I'm not going to act like it doesn't. Um, I'd be way happier at 13, but it is what it is. I, I still think it's 20 plus. It is you always have to worry about it. that backdoor junk touchdown, though. All right, next up here. Probably the probably the most intriguing game of of um of the picks we have here, Jared. Maybe the Cincinnati game, Cincinnati Notre Dame game is, but Boston College and Clemson. I don't know why they are giving Clemson a fifteen and a half point favorite. Like, has, this is, this has is they, stolen money. Have, have they watched Clemson this year? This have is... they watched them? Fifteen and a half point. This is a seven thirty kickoff. Boston College, Boston College, Boston College. I don't. I have zero faith in Clemson's offense here. They they have so much issues on their offensive line. They are struggling. They're on the ball. Uh, DJ's looking bad throwing. All and it, it all starts from that offensive line. Give me Boston College, Kyle, against Georgia, against Georgia, three points. Then yep. they played in FCS school. It doesn't count. I don't care. Yep. Against mm -hmm. Georgia Tech. 
They scored 14 points Mm -hmm. against NC State. In regulation, they scored 14 points. They did pick up an additional touchdown in, in overtime. They finished with a score of 21. But still, in regulation, they only score 14. I th- they so, could pitch a shutout and not cover. Clemson could so actually saying- pitch a shutout here and still not cover. <laughs> I don't think they pitch a shutout here. I'm not even sure if they lose or not, but I think Georgia so, Tech has a fighting chance to win this game. And they're a 15 point dog. I, this feels so easy that it has to be a trap. All I'm saying is, is this feels so easy that it almost has to be a trap. Mm-hmm. In, in regulation with with FBS schools. 14 is their in regular and in, in, in regular time. Clemson's averaging under 13 points a game. Yeah. And they're a 15 point favorite. This this feels like a trap. It's just, yeah. it feels too good to be true. It feels like a trap. Um, maybe most surprisingly, Kyle, as I logged into our CBS site, which is where we run the sloop picks through, um, mm-hmm. only 72% of the people have taken Boston College. I That's, that's puzzling to me. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's see here. Fuck out Esquire says here. Hmm. This line is suspicious. I'm probably the sucker that Vegas builds hotels on top of on top of, but I'm not confident Dabo and DJ could score 16 points, let alone win by that many. Plus, Halfley's pure charisma is worth at least two touchdowns. Give me the Eagles. He said everything we already said. We're just on the same wavelength right now. Uh, it has right. to be a trap. It has to be a trap. All right, last game here is our Sloopcast social screening game. Indiana and Penn State, 7.30 kickoff. Uh, is this the Herb Street? No, this, is, this isn't the Herb Street special, is it? Couldn't be. I, I'm drawing a blank here. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. It is. It is, Jared. Is this the ABC game? AB, it's on ABC, yeah. Uh, Penn State is a 10 and a half point favorite. Who do you have in this game, Jared? Uh, I got Penn State. Um, I'm buying the hype at this point with Penn State, and I might be stupid to do so. I might be a fool to do so. But I think Penn State's pretty good. Um, Indiana has not proven to be all that impressive thus far. Um, They had a closer than the final score indicates game against Cincinnati. Um, then they, you know, they also played Western Kentucky and Idaho. And what, what, what are you supposed to learn from those games? And, but well, they, they did get lost to Western Kentucky. What's that? They almost lost to Western Kentucky. They did Kentucky almost lose to Western Kentucky. Kentucky. Yes. Um, you could almost forgive them for that because on bookends of that game before and after that game, they have to place, they have to face top 10 teams. So you almost kind of give them a break for just sort of that emotional letdown that Western Kentucky is between those two games. I don't, so I don't, I'm not going to knock them too bad for that. Um, but I don't know. It's, should I be buying the Penn state hype though? I'm going to try and talk myself out of my pick. Now this is what I'm about to do. They win six points over Wisconsin, Wisconsin, as it turns out, is having a lot of offensive problems. They defeat Ball State the way they should defeat Ball State. They beat Villanova the way you should beat Villanova. They beat Auburn 28 to 20. And at the time, wow, they beat Auburn. Now, Auburn almost lost to, was it Georgia Southern last week? Uh, I forget who it was, but it was, it was not, it was a not very good team. They practically lost to last week as I pull up the schedule. Um, yeah, Georgia State, excuse me, not Georgia Southern, Georgia State. Um, I, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure at this point, but I am just going to go ahead and buy the Penn State hype until they prove me otherwise. Also, Indiana is just not very good. So screw it, Penn State. Yeah. 
Yeah, I got I got Penn State to cover here. I think they win by two touchdowns, at least two touchdowns here. Uh, Penix is just being Penix, just not throwing the ball well. He he already has six interceptions for the year, four touchdowns, six interceptions, fifty five percent completion here. He's got to have a stellar game just to be in this game here. I feel I, like every I feel like every time Penix is like overhyped. Like there's a lot of bragging about Penix. And then once Penix actually uh, is revealed, it's a little bit disappointing. Um, I don't know, a couple of flaccid performances and um, he really just can't rise to the occasion. I s- So I got, I got, um, yeah, I know, right, Buck, I, yeah, I got, I got, I got, Penn, I got uh, Penn State to cover here. So Buckeye Esquire says, Dotson is a stud. He is. Indiana is a complete fraud. Yep. I'm not completely sold on the Nittany Lions. Jared said that. But I like them by two touchdowns. I said that. Against maybe the basement of the Big Ten East. Penn State wins and covers. I mean, that has to be Maryland, right? Maryland's the basement of the Big Ten East. Big Ten East is pretty solid, by the way. Pretty solid division. Okay, Esquire says, baby Tua. You, well, he, he left. Bama didn't want him for a reason. Yep. All right. That is all our picks here. So to, to recap here, all three of us picked Ohio State to cover. Uh, Jared and Esquire pick Arkansas. I picked Georgia. Esquire and I picked the team up north and Jared picked Wisconsin. All three of us picked Cincinnati. Jared and I picked Bama and Esquire picked Ole Miss. All three of us picked Boston College. And all three of us picked Penn State. So a little, little mix here. We have one, two, three, four, four of our seven games are we picked the same. And we got we got some mix here. So we'll see how we do this week. Uh, he says two picks I can gain on Jared. Listen, all, all I'm saying right now is I am at worst. I'm telling you at worst, at absolute worst going five and two this week. I love five of my picks. Love five of my picks. The other two uh, is, is a little coin flippy. Five of my picks, I'll, I'll, I'll go to hell for five of my picks. I will ride to the gates and spit on Satan himself. For five of my picks. Interesting. <laughs> that Let's ride. To to what, right, what if I said the gates of Mordor? Would, would that tickle your fancy a little bit more, Kyle? Ride to the gates of Mordor for five of my picks. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. All right. Um, a few questions here I did not put into the notes, but I'm going to read them off of our Discord here. Uh, Black Eye Zach. Is Lane Kiffin truly the best play caller in our lifetime? Does Ole Miss have a chance dethroning Alabama for the number one spot? I'm sorry. What was the first sentence again? Is Lane Kiffin truly the best play caller in our lifetime? Fuck no. Who said that? Who said that? No, no, no. Yeah, but he's off. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, yeah, and then, like he's responding to someone else saying it is my is my point. Yeah, I know said, Buckeye Zach said, asked the question. Yeah, he just said ESPN. Okay, said yeah. That. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, don't even listen. Don't even listen to that. Yeah, uh, another question: Georgia's offense or Arkansas finally plays a defense? How does this game play out? Well, where do you- covered that already uh can we pick every nbc producer in the crotch for permitting lame 230 games yeah uh, what, what's with the 230 kickoff nbc it's making it impossible to watch the notre dame cincinnati game yes uh let's see here does Penix erupt against penn state it's gonna have to if they're gonna they're going to win, but I, I just don't see it. I mean, that if you can really punch it in there, maybe. 
but I feel like he's going to be on the outside looking in most of the game. Uh, I was asked, how many picks does Sean Clifford throw this week? Because he's no good. He's only thrown two for this this year so far. Yeah, there's two sides to that equation. The other side is like, can Indiana force them? And I, I don't mm-hmm. Not 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 to an extent in which it will affect the game that badly unless Clifford completely implodes. Yeah, he's actually playing his best football right now. He's 71 percent completion, averaging almost 10 yards per completion here. Eight touchdowns, two interceptions. He's he's playing his best right now. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know if he's maybe he's just a late bloomer. Any picks. I don't think he's going to throw maybe any picks this game. Well, so either a Clifford is a late bloomer and is actually a decent quarterback right now, or B um, the, the people around him are pretty good or C uh, they haven't really faced a good defense yet. One of those three. Uh, Nomad Nomad asks is not is not our rival at Iowa. The big 10 game of the year. No, Ohio State, Penn State will be. Mm-hmm. Um, Buckeye Esquire asks, will Penix be a grower or a shower in the primetime matchup? So when the lights are on, can Penix perform? And I, I tell you, um, I think he I think he probably does better when the lights are off. Um, maybe even preferably while underneath a blanket. Um, it just sort of depends upon uh, the level of confidence he has. And it's probably, it just really comes down to confidence, I think. Uh, that and performance anxiety, which I guess is just like the antithesis of confidence. I'm just going to leave that alone here. No, no, no. So Kyle, I think that's Kyle, the end it's, fun, of it's funnier if we don't acknowledge it and just keep going forward. All right. All right, that's the that's the end of this episode here, Jared. Uh, we get some good got some good games, not as good as last week's, but we got some pretty good games. We got two, we got two top ten matchups here. So yeah, it, we got some pretty good games here. Yeah, it's I think it's a I think it's a great lineup of games. When I was picking the seven for the salute picks this week, I had to like leave good games off which after a couple of weeks of like desperately trying to find that sixth or seventh game, it was really nice to like have options. <laughs> Just like, oh, which one of these good games do I want for the seventh game? Yeah, it's, I, I'm looking forward to this week. It should be a great week of college football. <laughs> All right, Kyle, uh, is that the end of the show? That is the end of the show. All right, Kyle, I want to uh, invite everyone to come join us on the Discord. I'm not even talking about the Patreon right now. Keep your money in your wallets. Come join us in the Discord. Have fun. Um, We have an active chat during the games. We have a pretty active chat just like during the week. We share news. We have a breaking news channel to make sure that makes sure that you are alerted when when breaking news does happen. Um, (laughs) That's a good gif. join the Simpsons gif. I enjoy it. Um, Yeah, that's it. That's all the talking I feel like doing, trying to keep this episode somewhat close to the target. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, What about some soccer news, Jared? Oh, boy. Soccer news? Oh, boy. Soccer news. Um, I think this might be the first to mention this, but I'm only I'm only mentioning this just because it's soccer related. But the Ohio State Buckeye soccer team won in double overtime today. They were down one nothing and scored to tie it up with about 10 minutes left and won in double overtime against ranked Bowling Green. And the crew, Jared, the crew are playing currently as we're speaking and recording this on Wednesday, are playing the Campiones Cup. Where they're up now, Jared, to nothing. Nice. Uh, it's great that you're providing live score updates for a game that will have been over for nearly 48 hours at when after some people hear this. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, good. Seems like a good night in Columbus soccer. How much time's left? Up to um, how much time's left? We have about 15 minutes left. 
uh, that's not enough to be comfortable with a 2-0. It's, it's on the verge of it, but not quite. Yep. Especially when the crew is only having 26% percent possession. Yeah. Good Lord. How are... We, we don't have time for this. The... <laughs> All right, that's it. That's the end. That's the end. Um, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a band called The Dopamines. They're a punk band. Um, they're I'm I'm suddenly blanking if they're from uh, Dayton or Cincinnati. I want to say Cincinnati, um, but if not Cincinnati, Dayton. Um, uh, they're like they're a pretty straightforward punk band, and they're one of my favorites in the state. So. You can stick around for the audio listeners. You can stick around and listen to it. If you're on YouTube, you can click the link down below, which will be a YouTube link to the song down in the show notes. So that's how you guys can listen to it, because uh, YouTube doesn't let us play music because it's YouTube. So uh, with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the dopamines. Where's my mouse? Can't find my mouse. There it is. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.